My name is Killian O'Kelly and I am a helm on an Atlantic 85 at the Bundoran Lifeboat Station in Ireland. It's, it, I mean, that's, you know, when you put the lifeboat beside it, like, that's, we're a speck compared to that. That's, that's a cargo ship, I think, a tanker, is it? And, I mean, even getting that thing to move on, on a tow needs so much power and in those weather conditions. And if I was approaching that boat as that coxswain is now, I'd be like, I, first of all, I'd say the obvious, we have never dealt with a boat this big. We're going to assess the situation here and we're going to make a plan. And immediately in those three sentences, you've slowed things down. There's a lot going through people's heads. And then I think once you do a briefing, they tend to focus on the task, get the rope out, set up for a tow, get on the radio, tell the Coast Guard we need this. There's a hundred jobs to be done on a lifeboat and they all need to be done now. Yeah, so this is my worst nightmare. This, this is a boat on the rocks. There's a crewman setting up for uh, veering down. Veering down is where the Atlantic 85 goes in on its anchor. So it sets up its anchor and it goes in under tension on that rope. So they're going astern, they're going backwards towards the rocks, but they have the control of the rope there in front of them. That's what I would have done. But look what happened. They jumped off the boat. Once you have a person in the water, it's the equivalent in lifeboat terms of pressing the big red button get them as soon as possible because all sorts of things go wrong. Cold water shock. They could have a heart attack. They could have any underlying illness, which means after 30 seconds, they'll deteriorate really quickly. They could just panic. People in water panic. And panic, unfortunately, causes drowning. That's as bad as it gets in an Atlantic, in my opinion. Um, three people in the water, trying to cover a distance between you, you and a boat, boat up on the rocks, you know, risk of it falling apart, risk of it keeling over, tough call out. So, what's happened there is they, in the surf zone on that beach, you can see there there's an awful lot of water moving around. Some of that moves in, unfortunately, in the direction straight out to sea. They find themselves in a bit of trouble there. They're, they're in the surf zone and they're not getting back to the shore without help. You can see that lifeguard's very skilled in the surf zone. You can see the way he controlled the board. He's sitting back up on it to let, let the power of the wave go out. So the lifeguard did very, very well there. I also, there's no audio on that, but I can, you can see him using his voice. You want to rescue anyone, one of the best things you can use is your own voice. You're okay, you're okay, look at me, you're going to be fine, tell them what you're going to do. That's the, that's the pointy edge of the lifeguard service there when they have to go in. That's, that's the equivalent of our, our earlier call-outs where, where our Severn class is pushing the equipment as far as it could. You know, that's pushing what a lifeguard can do in the surf zone. But that's only a little bit of their job. The lifeguard service is a very underrated service. It's an amazing service because it prevents so much drowning. They're unique in terms of a prevention service. Like, think about it. They literally actively patrol our beaches and prevent it. Like, whoever came up with the idea of a lifeguard was genius. <laughs> Big fan of the lifeguards. <laughs>